You poor little boy. It's okay. This morning I went into the paddock and I discovered that our mare Buffy was lying down. I went over and she'd, she'd passed away not long before I got there. Hey, I'm really sorry to hear what's happened. Yeah, pretty devastating news, huh? Wow, look at you. His blood sugar levels, his glucose levels as a result of, of just that lack of milk probably falling fairly rapidly. The time's ticking. We need to find him a, a permanent solution. We need to find him another mother. Oh, God, I hope he lives. <laughs> I'm on my way to what I'm sure is going to be a really tough situation. Overnight, a mare has passed away and she's left a foal orphaned. Now, foals need a lot of attention and a lot of care, so I'm on my way there now to see if I can help. Chris is on his way to Glenworth Valley, about an hour north of Sydney. You poor little boy. It's OK. At the stables, a heartbroken Mia and her mother Kerry are keeping a vigil over the little orphan foal they've named Brule. This morning I went into the paddock and I discovered that our mare Buffy was lying down. She doesn't usually lie like that. When I called, she didn't sit up and I knew there was something drastically wrong. Um, I went over and she'd, she'd passed away not long before I got there. Hi, Hi. Chris, how are you going? How are you? Yeah. Average? Oh, yeah, a bit. Hey, I'm really sorry to hear what's happened. Yeah. Pretty devastating news, huh? Okay. I'm falling here. Wow, look at you. All right, I'm gonna get in there and just, just see how he's going and then see if we can work out a plan. Plan would be good right now. Yeah, but The moment I meet Kerry, the urgency is written all over her face. And the reason for that is obvious. Brulee hasn't had a proper drink for a number of hours. So how old is he now? Uh, he was born three days ago. Yeah. Um, and he was a very large foal, as you can see. His mum appeared very healthy, placenta was healthy, everything looked great. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I was really happy with the way they were progressing and then arrived this morning. And um, most unfortunately, she'd had a big bleed overnight and um, we lost her. You're pretty sure that the reason she passed away was just from a bleed? Sorry, I need to ask these questions to make sure that mm -hmm. whatever's affected her isn't something that could have been passed on to him. Any time a mare dies, you're immediately concerned that maybe the same thing may be affecting the foal. If it was a virus or a serious bacterial infection, then the concern right now would be for Brulé's safety. Any small problem can become a massive issue for their health very quickly. I think that the best thing is obviously just to give him a check out now, see what sort of condition he's in, because essentially, you know, the, the clock is ticking for him, as, as I'm sure you're aware. Very aware, yeah. yeah. We need to... to find him a source of milk, but also a source of company and, and, and someone that can really look after him because even though he's a big boy, he's, he's still a fragile boy, isn't he? Very. It's almost instinctive that any time you lose a mare, you immediately worry about the foal because maybe there was a virus or a bacterial infection that could be affecting them both. The concern I have is that perhaps there is some deeper medical problem still lurking within him that could really threaten his health immediately. His mucous membrane colour is nice and pink, so he's obviously not lost any blood himself by the looks of it, which is encouraging. Let's we'll have a little listen to any, any gut sounds here. Hey, 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 it's all right. It's okay. Okay, we are getting some gut sounds there, but they're probably spaced apart a bit longer than I'd like, so. You know, the worry I have is that if his gut isn't turning over and isn't moving as, as quickly as it should, then he is at risk of becoming constipated or developing a, a colic there. Colic is probably the number one fear of any horse owner, and essentially it refers to a whole group of conditions that cause a horse's gut to stop moving. When it stops contracting, it's at risk of developing these toxins, which can then spread around their body and kill them very quickly. The last thing I want to do is just get his temperature. Right, 37.6. At the moment, his temperature's in a normal range, which is good news. But Chris is now concerned Boulay could be dangerously dehydrated. He's really seeking out a drink. My feeling is that his blood sugar levels, his glucose levels as a result of, of just that lack of milk are probably falling fairly rapidly. So really, if we're gonna get his gut moving and, and avoid any risk of him going into that hypoglycemic 
the situation just from a lack of energy. We need to find him a, a permanent solution. We need to find him another mother because sure milk is, is important but he needs that company, he needs that, that nurturing that only a mother can give him yeah. and that mother has to have four legs, it has to be a horse because he needs that round the clock care. Yeah. So do you have any other mares on the property that are really good mothers and, and could actually handle a, another foal or any that have, have lost their foals? You've only got the old girl out the front there and she'd love to take him on but uh, unfortunately she hasn't had a foal for a few years, so her milk's dried up. Good boy, good boy. The fact that there's not the perfect mare on a property of 400 horses really shows you just how hard this search is going to be. The added pressure here is that time's ticking. We have to find a solution and find it quickly. If you don't mind, I'd like to see if I can make a few phone calls, see if I can actually find a mare that might have just lost a foal or a mare that, that's amazing enough to, to handle two foals. Sure. My biggest fear is that if we don't find Prelay a foster mum, that he can die. Um, and yeah, I, I certainly don't want to lose both of them. This isn't going to be easy. Hello? Hey, Rebecca, it's Chris. How are you going? Yeah, good, thanks, yeah. yeah, good. Um, hey, a really strange request, but I'm hoping you can help me out. I'm looking for a, a mare that you may have that we could loan um, that can act as a bit of a, a foster mum to a to a foal that's just lost her mum. We've got mares, but none have recently given birth. Yeah, so nothing that really fits that. No, sorry. You wish I could help. It's a disheartening start, but with time running out for Brulee, Chris tries another local stable. I'm looking for a mare that can possibly act as a foster mum. You do have something? Yeah, and you know what? I reckon it actually might help her out too. I'll float it down to you right now. Yeah, look, that'd be incredible. Not a problem, mate. I hope she gets the bill. All right, we'll see you soon. See you later. Cheers. No the mare I found is called Zaji, and she's actually had a pretty tough week herself. She lost her foal just a few days ago. As sad as that is, that actually makes her a perfect candidate to fulfill what we need from a mare. All right. I have some good news for you. We've found a mare. She's lost her foal just recently. The foal was a little bit older than Brulee, but she's still got plenty of milk. And she's on her way right now. Yep, great. Thank you. Right now, it's probably all too easy to get excited and assume this is all problem solved, but it's so far from that, it's not funny. Because once this mare arrives, we have to make sure that she does actually accept this foal. Because if she doesn't, we're back to square one. How are you doing? Sorry, I'm Chris. Steve. How are you, Steve? How did she travel? Yeah, right? really well. Yeah. In Glenworth Valley, an hour from Sydney, Chris is about to get his first look at the mare he hopes will be able to save three-day-old Brulee. Good girl. Easy girl. Here we go. Feel your way. That's the way. Good girl. Now that we have a mare, it's so easy to think that it's all problem solved. But unfortunately, that is far from the truth. Been through a lot, haven't you? Yeah. Every moment of this introduction has to be perfectly stage managed because if one part goes wrong, the whole arrangement flies out the window. It just won't work. Zaji can't be introduced to Brulee just yet. Yeah, it's all right. It's okay. She's agitated from the trip and needs to be walked. And Chris has an urgent job to do, starting with a bucket of the mare's urine. Brulee's obviously had a pretty tough time, but this is probably the last thing you think he needs, but it could be the best thing for him. This urine will actually be used to disguise the scent of Brulee, so hopefully Zaji accepts Brulee as being her own foal. So we're essentially going to cover him in urine. Unlike us, Horses use their sense of smell as their primary sense. So how Brulee smells will form 90% of our mare's judgment over whether this is her foal or an imposter. How's that? How's that? It's been a tough day, hasn't it? Hmm? 
They won't get much tougher than this. But you still want to do that. Okay. You won't want to do that after this. The next indignity for little Brulee is a liberal coating of Zaji's faeces. So I'm just trying to target the spots that <laughs> mum is most likely to smell. By doing all this, we're trying to fool her into thinking that this foal is somehow part of her because it has her smell. And if it smells right, maybe it is right. So I think it's probably time to start to get our mare prepared for the big introduction. There are horses out there that do this for a living. They are professional foster mums. But you've got to remember, Zaji has never done this before. To minimise the risk of Zaji kicking or seriously injuring the foal, Chris is giving her a sedative. A little prick here. The whole idea here is to help her relax and really focus on being open to being a new mum. Yeah, good girl. She does it. Now that she is looking relaxed, we can lead her up to the yard, and that's where our introduction is going to take place. Yeah, good girl. Up until this point, we focused a lot on Zaji's sense of smell, but she is still going to use her eyes to look at the foal and realise, hey, that's not mine. So, we need a blindfold. Ready to roll? Yeah, we are. All right, let's go. All our plans are now in place, but really the most crucial part is the next few minutes because that decides whether Brulee has a new mum or stays an orphan. Go right in. She's calling in. Go for it. Yeah. The real danger here is that if Zaji truly rejects Brulee, she'll let him know about it and she'll do that by kicking him. And a kick to him in the wrong place, it could be fatal. Owner Kerry knows that Brulee's future depends on the foal being able to suckle. OK. You just find it there, Lauren. You find it. I'm feeling very nervous because this could mean the difference between life and death for Brulee. Yeah. It's all right. He's here. Your baby's here. OK. Boy. It's OK. The baby's here. This is clearly the critical time. They're giving each other little sounds. They're clearly aware of each other's presence and there's no sign of aggression yet. It's OK. Just let him um, feel around there. It's on sir. She's drinking off the mare. Brilliant. Brulee dives straight for the udder. That sound of him suckling is right now the sweetest sound of all. Isn't she a beautiful mare to do that? Like Brulee, Kerry's had to be incredibly brave just to get through today to what we hope would be a positive outcome. Now we've seemingly got that, the emotions all become too much. Oh, God, I hope he lives. You right? Yeah. All right. Big day, huh? I was trying to have a little cry by myself, but that's all right. <laughs> an, an amazing moment. You, you could um, search high and low and not find a compatible mare, and uh, we've been fortunate enough, lucky, enough and thankful enough to find a mare that um, loved him and he loved her back straight away. You're a clever boy. She's a lovely girl. He's got a really strong will to live, doesn't he? He's just... He really has. Mm. has. Hopefully, you know, that the, those hormones of hers will kick in. Mm those instincts and those maternal urges of hers will, will still be going once the sedation wears off. And so this will become a lot more comfortable for her and then she'll, yeah, she'll be enjoying this. What this little moment has really shown us is that their bond is incredibly strong and it's getting stronger by the minute. So what this whole situation needs is less human time, more horse time. They're looking pretty good. Awesome. Incredibly relieved. Uh, it, it could have gone, um, either way and um, it's great for her and um, it's even better for Brulee. Thank you so much, honestly, it's great. This day had such a sad start, yet through a lot of hard work and a little bit of luck, we brought two horses together that need each other and made us have many happy days ahead.
my beautiful boy. Huh? It's been four weeks since Chris's emotional rescue mission to save the life of a struggling little orphan foal named Brulee. Hi. Hello. Well, this is a good sight. Isn't it ever? Just absolutely inseparable. Just a few weeks ago, due to a really desperate situation, we took a big chance on a mare that I really didn't know in the hope that she would take to a little foal called Brulee. They may not be blood relations, but you wouldn't know it. She's a great teacher as well. Mm. It's, it's more than just physical. It's, it's got to be emotional as well, and that, and that connection Absolutely is it does. really giving him so much, so much security. And, and for her, she's, you know, she lost her foal. Yeah. So she feels complete again. Yeah, I think that's why it has worked so well. It has been a miracle for us. It's been very surprising, and we're ever so thankful for the gift of Saji. It's, it's been amazing. What I've learned is that you're doing a great job, and these guys have got it all sorted. Oh, thank you. Mm. With your help, thank you. No, I played a part, but... You played a big part. There are many more beautiful things than, than looking at that. No, there really aren't. This relationship just shows you that you can never give up when it comes to animals, because out of the greatest darkness here and the depths of despair has come this incredible bond that right now seems unbreakable. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.